My wife and I recently built these two wicking beds out of an IBC tank. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how we did it. So a wicking bed is essentially a self-watering garden that has a reservoir of water in the bottom and it waters the plants from the bottom up using capillary action. Very similar to those self-watering hanging pot plants that you see around. IBC tanks are used for moving liquids from one place to another and they're often only single use. So you can pick them up cheap on places like Facebook Marketplace, but just make sure you get something that's only had food products in it. Ours have had macadamia oil, so they're perfect, but sometimes they're used for moving chemicals and cleaning things and stuff like that. So just try to avoid those. Now these IVC tanks are perfect for making these wicking beds because they hold water and they're also just a great size for a garden bed. Once we picked up our IVC tank, the first thing we wanted to do was separate the tank from the frame. Now there's just a couple of bolts that held the supporting rods and we undid those and we're able to take the tank out of the frame. And we were also able to separate the main part of the base from the frame itself because we didn't want that. Once we had the tank and the frame separated, the next thing we did was measure and mark the middle of both the frame and the tank because this one tank will make two wicking beds. With everything marked out, we then went about cutting both the frame and the tank in half. To cut the frame, I used a jigsaw with a metal blade on it. And for the tank, I used an angle grinder with a thin blade on it. I think you could use either for both. So you could use a jigsaw for both the frame and the tank or an angle grinder for both the frame and the tank. With the tank and the frame cut in half, we found that there was still quite a bit of oily residue left in the tank from the macadamia oil. So we cleaned that out using a gurney and some dish washing detergent and got the tanks all nice and clean. So when you have your half tank and your half frame, if you flip the frame the opposite way that it was originally in, you get a nice supporting frame that will go around each tank. With the tank cut in half, we could then put the two halves of the tank in the garden we want it and start making our wicking bed. We started off by laying out some 50 mil ag pipe in the bottom in a loop and then putting a T-piece on that and running a piece of ag pipe up in the corner. Now what this is gonna do is gonna be used to fill the reservoir once our wicking bed is completely full. We then covered the ag pipe with a layer of rock. Now in one tank we used scoria, which is a porous volcanic rock, and we filled the tank about a third with that scoria. And for the other tank, we used 20 mil blue gravel and we filled the tank in that one about halfway because it's not porous. Now, the next time I do this, I think we'll just go down the route of the gravel and filling it halfway. It's a lot cheaper to use the gravel than the scoria and having the reservoir up about the halfway mark means there's less distance that the water has to travel to reach the plants. Once we'd put the rock in, we then drilled a hole at the level that the rock was at using a hole saw and we screwed a one inch poly nipple into the side. And this is gonna act as a drain for our reservoir. So the water can fill up to that level and it can't continue rising and fill and flood the entire garden bed. On the inside of the poly nipple, we put a piece of shade cloth and zip tied that in place. And that's just gonna stop any material from inside the garden bed going out through that hole. Next, we put a layer of geotextile fabric over our rock layer. And what this is going to do is stop any of the organic matter from the top of the garden bed going down and filling up the reservoir at the bottom. It's still going to allow water to come up from the reservoir through the fabric though. With the geotextile fabric down, it was then just a matter of filling the garden up the rest of the way with organic matter. We chucked some sticks, branches, compost, and we got some soil out of the chook run as well because that is just really good organic matter.
And then with the garden full, it was just a matter of planting everything out with seedlings and putting a bit of mulch down on top. This one we did a couple of weeks ago, and as you can see, it is thriving. Now, when you first put seedlings in, you will need to water them a little bit to get them established, but once they are established, there's very little maintenance and they kind of look after themselves and just look how well this one's doing. The other one only just got planted out yesterday, so they haven't grown as much. Now, the last thing I'm gonna mention is you could tidy this up and clad it in some timber, something like some pallet wood or something like that. You could make it look a lot more aesthetic than what it does here. You've got all these steel supports that you could screw directly into. Just make sure you don't pierce the tank and you'd have some very nice looking garden beds. I hope this video helps you out and uh, good luck if you are attempting your own wicking bed.